Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you some of the things you can do to create an interactive website using Web Starts. Here you can see I'm on my home page, and the first thing that I want to show you is a slideshow. You can add a slideshow to your website, and then the people who are visiting your website can navigate through the various slides by using the controls. The next one I want to show you are animations. You can see how when I scroll down to this section of my page, these paragraphs of text and this button, they all slid in and appeared. So that's animations. After that, I'm going to show you how to drop an anchor text. Anchor text allows you to link from one element to any place on your website. Then you can also create what are called click actions. For example, when I click on this icon, it launches a modal or light box with an image in it. And when I click on this video icon, it launches a YouTube video. And then when I click on this up arrow, it takes me to the top of my website. Scrolling down, I will also show you how you can create this parallax 3D effect. You can see that my little bag is scrolling just ever so slightly above that background of a brick wall. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how to create fixed positions. That means that when I scroll, you can see the image in the background of this strip stays in the same place and the content scrolls in front of it. I'm also going to show you how to create rollover effects for your button and also rollover effects for your icons. So let's jump in and get started. How to add a slideshow to your website. From the Web Starts page editor, go ahead and click on Add and then scroll down to Slideshows and then click on that. Next, we're gonna click Add Images to add some images to our slideshow. For this example, I've already uploaded some images to my file manager, but as always, if you want to upload your own images, just click on the Upload icon. Then upload some images from your local computer. I'm just going to upload these three images or add these three images to my slideshow. So there you can see that I've added them. I can rearrange them by dragging and dropping them. And then I click insert. My slideshow now appears on my page, but it's not formatted the way that I want. So I'm going to click on the settings cog and I'm going to start by changing the little arrows that you use to navigate from slide to slide. So I chose the arrow style with the round circles and the black carrot pointing in different directions. And then I want my slideshow to fade from one photo to the next. So I choose that for my transition effect. You can play with things like the speed or image cropping and scaling. I want my photos to be centered just like so. And so I choose center from there. Then you can also choose to do boxed or partial uh, in terms of your layout. You can choose to make your direction horizontal or vertical but just for this demo what I'm going to do is add this slideshow to my page and now you can see uh, it appears there and someone can just navigate between those slides and if I want I can make that a full strip just like that and then save those changes looks great Let's move on to the animation effect. You can add animations to any element just by selecting the element, then clicking the animation icon, and then choosing the appropriate animation from the drop down menu. There are a lot of different animations you can choose from. If you want to preview one, select it from the drop down menu and then click on play animation, and it will show you what that animation does. So over here, once again, I have a slide in from left, I click the animation, and so on and so forth. You can apply animations to everything in a strip by selecting the strip. So you can see here all of these elements are attached to my strip, and then clicking on the animation icon, and then applying that. And then whatever animation you apply to the strip will happen before the individual element animations.
Our next feature is Parallax. Parallax requires you to have a background strip. To add that strip to your page, what you'll do is you'll go ahead and click Add Image with the strip selected. Then select your background image. I'm using an image from the preloaded library. So now I've applied my image. I can choose to crop or act fit or choose actual size for that image. I can also choose to focus on different parts of the image in the background. But down here at the bottom, you click on this drop down menu and you choose parallax. And then that's what creates that 3D effect, like the elements that are sitting above this background are moving at a different rate than the background itself. Going back over there, notice I can also do reverse parallax, and that just makes the scrolling effect happen in reverse. The next one I want to show you is similar. That's the fixed positioning. Here, once again, I've added an image strip to my page. So if you haven't done that, you can just click strip, double click on the strip, and attach an image and that's how you create something like this. I'm going to delete that. And here you can see that when I scroll the elements like this text that appear on a different layer than the background image and so the background image just kind of stays in place as I scroll. It's called fixed positioning. We do that by selecting the strip itself, clicking the drop down menu and then choosing fixed. couple of other things I wanted to show you, like the click actions. Here I've added an icon to my page, but that icon could be any element. It could be this text, it could be an image. Anything that you can click this little hyperlink icon for, you can choose to create an actionable click. So I choose action from the drop down in the hyperlink creation menu, and then I choose the appropriate action that I'd like to create. For this one, I chose Launch Image and Pop-Up. So once that's selected, I then want to choose the image that's going to launch when somebody clicks on that icon. When you're ready, click Create Link. For the one that had the video player launch, I selected the icon, chose Action, and then chose the Launch Video in Pop-Up, and then I chose a video. You can choose a video from one that you've uploaded to your Web Starts file manager, or you can search for a video on YouTube. In this example, I searched for a video on YouTube, and then once I found that, I just clicked on it. See if I can find that same video. So there's the video, and then I clicked Insert File, and then Create Link. This actionable click takes you to the top of the page. That's a pretty easy one. Click on the element, click action, and then just choose scroll to top of page. You can also scroll to the bottom of a page if you want, and then click create link. You can also create hover effects for your various buttons by selecting buttons and then choosing the design style. And if you choose this ghost design, then you'll be able to uh, further customize things like uh, the colors and so on and so forth. I also dropped an anchor link that's attached to that button. The way you do that, let's go ahead and remove the anchor link that I added. Go to the add on the sidebar, scroll down to anchor, and then just drop this anchor wherever you would like it to appear on your site. So what this does and it doesn't need to be on the same page, it could be on any page of your website, is it makes an element clickable, and when somebody clicks on that element that you've associated with this anchor, it'll take you to wherever you place this anchor on the page. So I'm placing it just below this parallax strip, and then I'm going up to this button, clicking on it, clicking on the create link, choosing anchor as my target, then choosing my home page as the place where that anchor exists and then choosing anchor one because that's the only anchor that I've created thus far. Click create link 
and that button will now take whoever clicks on it to where I drop that anchor. Show you how that looks on the live website so you can see what I mean. Here I click on this button and it takes me all the way down to where I drop that anchor in the click actions section. So those are just a few of the things you can do to make an interactive website with Web Starts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to visit webstarts.com to create your very own free website and see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.